Okay. Okay, I think mm. we can start. I think people are coming in, but mm. we can we can sh 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 uh, shortly start to talk. Yes. Welcome. You are really, really warmly welcome to this webinar. And, and today we have this very interesting topic. Uh, it's uh, how to successfully uh, remodel milking robots in a large scale farm. So there are many things, remodeling, uh, milking robots, large scale, and uh, and I think maybe the 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 main idea what me and and Yoni and Fordi Ban has is that it is possible, and and it's possible to do it in a successful way, and milking robots are like um, it is possible to to implement that kind of milking system in a, in big farms too. And the reason for having having this kind of webinar is that we have got uh, more and more requests and 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 like like uh, comments from also mm -hmm. other other people and other advisors that this subject would be something where we should talk. Absolutely. So let's a little bit see what will happen in next forty five minutes or so. <laughs> um, I think our talk will take about forty five minutes. We'll see, mm -hmm. <laughs> and and then we have time for 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 questions. So first we will have a short introduction of 4D barn and then we will go to the basic things. When to build a new, when to retrofit, uh, what are the benefits and limitations of, of remodeling. Uh, also we introduce you four kind of must elements every remodeled barn should have like really the things that you should always always think about when you when you are introducing robots to your old facility and and also because we have a lot of information about working in in robot barns and data about that we want to show you what you can expect when you if you decide to retrofit your your barn barns to the robots and what kind of goals you should set for you and your team and like I said in the end there is time for some questions and um, ah, and we will also uh, show you a great way to learn more about these essential elements of robot bonds in general and and that is our e-learning material and we have a, an offer for you of course uh, here is if you if you want to if you want uh, I think everyone has found all these these buttons here so so if you want to talk just uh, push this one and chat you find it from here. But and, and, cool. yeah, and you can you can leave those chat questions during all the, all this. So when you have something in your mind, mm. then we will take a look at them in the end. And of course, if you have some like like free questions, we are not here so many that you can easily. Mm. If we have time. You can just open your microphone and make a question directly. So that is not an issue. Absolutely, that's a great great possibility in the end of this this or our talk. Okay, about 40 barn. We work globally, right, Yoni? Well, there is still still some some uh, more uh, blue, which would be could could be painted on this map. But, <laughs> ah, but, <laughs> with coloring to do. Yeah, but but like I said, we are we of uh, we are mostly of course our projects because we are a company based in Finland. Our, most of the projects what we are doing are in Finland, but we have done done also quite a lot of work in in Sweden, Estonia, Latvia, and Czech Republic and Russia and and uh, also in the united states and canada uh, and uh, uh, i think the biggest biggest country at the moment outside finland where we have been most active is japan and that is um, for, when we talk about that is some some people find it quite surprising mm -hmm. because uh, people don't really kind of realize that there's actually quite a, quite quite a large dairy industry in japan and in hokkaido in northern finland yeah, in northern, northern, Finland, northern, northern, northern Japan. Northern, northern, northern Japan, yes. Yeah. Oh, God, is in northern. Mm. I was thinking in, in my mind that the, the actually the weather we were talking about in the in the beginning about the weather. So the the weather uh, is quite similar to northern Scandinavia yeah. and Hokkaido. But okay, um, our work 
we are a consulting team and like I said we come from Finland and uh, one of our core values is the science so our work is based on science and we also do our own service and studies and of course uh, follow very closely the scientific world so that is like very very important we are kind of uh, we kind of want to bring the science scientific world into the practice uh, and be first ones to do that and follow the, the basic rules that ha have been found there. Then a few words about us. Yoni first. Okay, well I'm, I'm, I'm Yoni and I'm an architect and uh, uh, I have designed barns since I was 11, year, 11 years old, so this is really a thing what, I'm, what I like to do. So in, in, in our company, I'm the guy with the pencil, so I'm the one who is really likes to make drawings. And my background is, is in dairy, dairy farming, so my, my, my home farm, which is now run by my brother, is an organic farm with two milking robots. Uh, I am Virpi and uh, I'm a veterinarian. Uh, I used to be a practicing vet, practicing vet. I started my career as a practicing vet, as a general practitioner, and focused more and more on, on cows. And in Finland, we have had ro milking robots since early 2000. So I've seen them for more than 20 years and worked, worked with them more than 20 years now. And in 4D Barn, my kind of responsibilities are cow welfare and health, but of course, do all the work not so much the pencil work though <laughs> i guess uh and then rest of our team uh we have really wide range of expertise in our team and uh, and we have two agronomists mario and and virpi here in finland and then we have two veterinarians in in japan hokkaido uh in the middle there's a photo of david He's also here. Here in, in this webinar, I noticed behind, behind him was this wonderful, <laughs> wonderful uh, warm scenery. Uh, but I think he's sitting in, in Wisconsin, a bit colder climate. And, and he's, he brings to our team, team decades of experience of working with the large scale yeah. dairy farms in US. Yes. Okay. Why, okay, why large scale robot farms are looking at robots, Yoni? So this is, I guess, the, the, the big things. Why do we get these questions from, from uh, Europe and North America about, about uh, robotic milking and, and how to retrofit bars? Robots. Yeah, this is interesting because uh, in the beginning, robots were, were kind of meant to be for small farms, mm -hmm. for family farms, and uh, and uh, there was lots of discussion that if you are if you go if you are going over a certain size, then robots are really not the way to go. You really should go uh, go with the, with the parlor. But, but this is kind of changing now. It's the, it's mm -hmm. changing, and 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 as every everybody knows, that the challenge is the labor. It's difficult to get people to work in the barn. Uh, first of all, there is really a lack of people, and then the other thing is that the, the labor labor uh, kind of like price or cost goes higher, and uh, and the, uh, because of because of that, uh, it it it's it just uh, you just need to automat automatize things because of that. There are other reasons too for like individual farms this labor issue is kind of kind of everyone has it mm. and it's and it's and it's, and it's everywhere it's everywhere, it's all everywhere over the world. All of, yes globally but then there are like these uh, farm specific reasons too yes for many farms uh, especially those farms which are running milking parlors almost 24/7 uh, the reality is that milking parlors are, they are wearing out so the farms are those farms are in the situation that they need to do something they, they need to invest to the new milking technology and then the, the, the question comes do i continue with the parlor or do i switch to box milking robots mm. Then of course they they need to maybe expand and uh, and uh, and have a invest in new milking systems anyway. So 
Yeah. So we we you see in some some farm uh, farms to which we talk with, uh, the thing is that they actually have the situation that they are milking 24 to almost 24 seven, and there is just not enough capacity in the milking parlor, and there needs to be an expansion. And again, the thing is that shall they shall, shall they start start to switch this system bit by bit to robotic milking, so that uh, in addition to this parlor which is running 24 seven, the next expansion will be with um, uh, with robots. So. Like I said, there are different uh, situations in situations in different farms. Uh, also, milk yield is rising. Maybe maybe farms need to milk instead of two two x milkings per day three times. Mm. Yeah, even 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 some farms uh, which are large, they they milk two times a day, and as we know that the cow genetics and feeding and everything, it will it it it, it develops, and and everybody knows the advantage to have the third milking and. And again, we come back to the labor. If you are running your parlors 24/7, it really means that there there, are, there needs to be people on the night shift, and and it's mm. harder and harder to get people to work in that kind of circumstances. And if you if you want to have them, they uh, it, it's going to be expen more expensive. Okay. Uh, well, thank you for joining, Keith. Will you please turn off your your camera? Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Uh, Let's continue. So, to remodel or build a new one, what do you, what are your thoughts about that? Is it always the the new, wonderful new, brand new, shiny building? Is it better than so much better than the new one? Well, well, this is the question. What what uh, farms really uh, what what mm -hmm. they are thinking about when when they 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 know that they need to do something. Of course, we know that building a new barn is an optimal so solution. You can have the alleys as wide as the recommendations are today. You can have the best possible freestyles. Uh, and best possible uh, the types types of all, all technical systems and of course that's the that's that, that's that's the optimal way but it's not always possible and and mm. there are most m m m lots of lots of uh, reasons for that and because everybody knows that the biggest everybody would like to have I would like to have a new car also yeah by the way <laughs> but but the question is that do I have the money for that mm. and it's the same thing also with the bonds so like, uh, if if you just are not able to do the investment uh, uh, building a new barn, then you need to renovate, and and because of that, because new barns are expensive, typically, then you need to always expand your milk production so that you can justify these big investments, having more cows and producing more milk. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, maybe maybe some farms have also. Uh, thoughts that that they will expand and will have a new building later on, but but they they and they will go robotics in in the future, but not right now. So, kind of the way to start this robot milking milking is to start it in the old facilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that that's right, and it's again like the 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 way of changing the direction, so that okay now from now on we go with the box robots, and we change we go to that uh, direction like like uh, uh, bit by bit. Mm, exactly. So this can be a one way, mm -hmm. one way to to expand. But, but mm, is it is it is it so easy? So is it, <laughs> you just buy robots. Okay, you you shut your parlor down. Of course, you first buy the robots, drop them into the, your barn, then shut your your parlor, and and then start the robots, and that's it. Is it that easy? Well, it's really not that easy. <laughs> Uh, we and then that. we then we have this dilemma with the old freestyle barn. Mm -hmm. So so uh, uh, what do you what do you think about this? For example, when you look at this picture, mm. uh, this this uh, this farm is thinking about uh, uh, to putting putting robots and and yeah. what are, what are those like limitations or or things around uh, the problematic with the old barn? Hey. No, well, when you look at that you first start to think about all the cows that are standing in in the alleys if you look at let me 
uh, here. Can you see my? Yes, you can. So look at here. There's not much room <laughs> if you think that that, uh, for example, milking robot would be like like here in the front. So how would a cow get to the robot? <laughs> if it looks a bit narrow here. So so there these ones are in the feed bank, but there are also standing cows in them in the free stalls. So that is actually if I look at this, those two things look look a bit problematic to me. So we can see that the alleys, uh, many of alleys are narrow. Uh, like this, this barn is very likely about 20, 25 years old. And then, then uh, in that times information, the alleys, uh, people thought that that's enough. Uh, but, but for today's standards, it's not enough anymore. Quite right. Then we have some kind of <laughs> some kind of fans here but uh but the cooling is one and ventilation in general and cooling specifically is is one of the issues too that that is a bit bit problem it looks it would be in this part yeah as 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 we know that the the the, the cows 25 years ago compared to the cows uh, right now the production rate mm -hmm. is much more higher and the cows are they they just cows cows need today's cows need much much more fresh air and they need space they need uh, uh lots of uh, fresh fresh air and good cooling when i think about this i think about parlor farms and then i think about uh, automatic milking uh, bars with automatic milking uh, in a parlor farms the cows days are kind of pre-scheduled so if you have three times a day milking and then you have a, a tmr delivery so those four things or three things they kind of uh, set the day day schedule for the cow but in a robotic barn well there is of course the delivery of of partial mix ratio but otherwise the cows decide what they do mm. and, and and no one is pushing them from one place to another but they should be actively themselves walk around in the barn go to the feed bank go to the stall go to the go to the milking robot and that's where you need those that's when it gets problematic if there's no room and if there's no ventilation and if the stalls are uncomfortable. Yeah. And one more thing I, I want to address is the working style. And that, that, that doesn't, that's not really the thing with the, with the old, old barns. It, you can also bring your old working habits to the new barn, even though it's new and shiny. But, um, but it's very important to change your management style and your working style when you are working in an AMS barn. So don't take the old parlor habits to your to your new system. Yeah. These are the kind of the four must functional elements every remodeled barn should have, and uh, they are. Uh, don't get stuck to the building time. So look, look beyond that. Mm. Like I said in the previous pre previous slide, you need the space. <laughs> That's something you need. You cannot just e uh, be without it. The more space, the better. You could say. Uh, you must get the robot configuration right. It also helps uh, with the space issue, and do the best you can with the cow comfort so let's look at this a little bit more detail mm. yes let's start about the, this uh beyond building time uh as everybody knows and maybe also this picture shows it very well that uh changing the robots uh changing the bond to the milking robots is not easy it needs lots of uh demolishing de demolishing uh existing concrete uh it takes some it takes some time but uh, but uh, quite often people stuck into that and they think think that okay let's just put the robots there as easy way as possible mm -hmm. so that this uh, building building time is is, is easy. But but uh, that is that is I would say that the the very big mixed the biggest mistake in all the robot remodelings this thing that you just do things uh, just looking too much building time because we know that if the if for example if the cow comfort is is good then uh, this this uh, 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 although building time is uh, demanding, uh, the results can be very, very, very good. And 
And again, the thing is that when you are starting to build something from concrete and uh, and you, 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 you make some new construction, new floors or, and on those kind of things, you after the after concrete's dry, you will you will live with them, them and you don't change them anymore and you just live with the consequences. Mm -hmm. And that's why it is very, very critical that uh, when you do something, you need to do it right. And, and like I said, when well done, the results can be very, very nice, very good. Yes, that is that is kind of surprisingly so that that really you can get the remodeled barn to be as um, as good as as a new one in a functional way. So really, mm -hmm. you can do that. And 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 when we work with our customers, we always start. Uh, from the kind of the ba the basic thing is that we want it to be as good as new one, mm -hmm. and and it's important to know where to compromise. If you need to compromise somewhere, you should know where to do it. Mm -hmm. Be really careful with those. Yeah, so, you, yes. you you kind of like need to need to set the standard high mm -hmm. when you start mm -hmm. to do that. Absolutely. Do that. Mm -hmm. And don't don't when you start to remodel, don't think that okay, I can achieve oh, only only a little bit. No, yeah. you need to achieve almost as as much as in a good one. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Uh, then, how about production? What happens with the production? Ah, sorry. This is a, a op general observation. Yes. About the production next. Yes. Time. So we have we have interviewed our clients, which have been uh, remodeling uh, barns to milking robots, and asked about their experiences uh, d during the building time. And what we have found out that typically the building time is about one to three months per pen. Some farms can do and have done these robot changes uh, surprisingly very very fast for some farms it has taken taken quite a, lot, a bit more time i think the very big big thing is that uh, concrete just takes some time to dry and coatings of for example robot room floors take some time to dry but there are, luckily there are now new like materials and new systems how you can you can make them uh, them to uh, like dry quite fast but it's not only only that it's also challenging to arrange animal traffic to parlor like in this picture you can see uh, so that you need to like protect those areas what you have uh, uh, like like um, uh, put the new concrete you need to you need to kind of like protect those areas so that the cows are not <laughs> going there and manure is not uh, not not splashing and and in general uh, <laughs> some construction people just don't like to work among <laughs> among the cows even they don't they don't like the smell of the cow barn because they need to work inside in the cow barn with the animals and and uh, quite often uh, you are not able to go in to do these renovations with big machines so you need to have so, those small machines and uh, of course the, with the small machines it can take uh, much more time uh, to tear down, for example, existing concrete. Okay, then about the production, does everything fall fall apart and collapse? Or the production will it collapse when when the re renovation is going on in the barn? Well, uh, yeah. So, like in this picture, uh, you can see that there's there's a really really situation that the robots uh, actually here the robots are already running, but now this farm is uh, like uh, re renovating this area behind the behind the robots, so, so it's still kind of like like uh, construction time. Mm -hmm. So the experiences from the farms are are, are quite quite similar, uh, so that uh, for the for the building time they. They uh, they go for a short period of time. They go down, but quite fast. When the cows also learn the system, they 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 kind of go go back on track quite fast again. And 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 some farms don't haven't hasn't seen very very big uh, change uh, in in that in, in the production. And I think that would that is very very good result. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And uh, and anyway, uh, like in in those uh, those renovation cases, uh, there's quite an often quite quite lots of noise. For example, when you when you are like like uh, cutting the old concrete or you are uh, diamond sawing this this concrete away, so the noise is maybe the biggest biggest problem. Mm -hmm. But but in the end of the day, uh, it just takes some time and then it's over. Mm, exactly, and cows are really amazing how they adapt to many things. Yes. So so in the first hours they might be really scared but in the end of the day they are like okay nothing's happening so let's let's continue doing what we are doing so lying down and eating uh there are also other things to consider uh 
we I think we already mentioned that many farms that are considering a robotic milking, the parlors are running high capacity and there are cows constantly coming and mm. going in and out of the, the pens. And it's like a little bit like working on a on a highway. <laughs> so where cars are coming and going and still there they are doing the, the work work there. Guys are doing their preparing. I mean uh, they are con making new roads and and things like that in the in the middle of the traffic. So this is a little bit like the same same thing. Yeah, but but, but uh, in in large farms where if you are running your parlors to almost twenty four seven, then uh, in those highways sometimes they use this night time when the traffic is mm -hmm. lower. But but in, in those uh, farms uh, which are running twenty four seven, there is not that, that kind of night time. No. So if it's possible, or if you have if you have a possibility to expand some of the pens or or make a new pen or or something like that then do that first and that gives you like this kind of flexibility in in doing the changes um, yeah. and that 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 really helps even if even some expansion would mm. would help a lot so practically that would mean that uh, if you have let's say like 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 four or five pens of cows cow groups uh, in, in a milking parlor then build this expansion part, fir part first so that you mm. can you can kind of clean this one pen put mm. that new pen cows the new expansion and then have the pen without any cows and then the uh, the changes are much more easier to done uh, easier to be done because there are not cows in that pen at all then in a in a large farm uh, distances from between the robots are typically long, not not in one pen, but but in different different pens and buildings. So quite often you need a new milk room. You should consider that. Yeah, this is and and uh, there are there are lots of people from um, uh, robotic companies in this in this meeting. So the, of course you know you know this issue and mm -hmm. and each each company have some their some of their own limitations how long the milk pipes can be. But that is something what you what you need to understand also in a very very early phase that mm -hmm. there might be a play uh, need for for having a new milk room somewhere. Extra people, extra pair of hands and and feet help uh, to manage the building time, but. Uh, and and uh, so be prepared for that. But actually, at least one farm we talked about, they said that that they were prepared for was it six months? Uh, you know, mm -hmm. having extra personnel six months, uh, the renovation time, and six months after that. But actually, the cows learned the new system very fast in in about two weeks. So so they they really didn't need that yeah. extra extra people for that long time so cows learn but us people it's a bit different but uh, but doing the renovation during the building time absolutely you need more cow pushers and uh, and uh, and people working in the pens uh, by the way Virpi, we need a little bit speed up this bit because otherwise we, we are here two hours <laughs> okay you are right boy hey. ah okay uh robots they need space around them uh and kind of the question is that will the number of cows be the same? And and if you answer yes, your options are to expand the building or move some cows or cow groups into some some other building. Uh, why? Because robots they just need room around them. And here's one example of of renovation from a parlor to robots. And you can see that you have to take quite many many um, stalls away. Yeah, in, in a way, it's a nice system because then you can leave it like look look your pen size, and then for example, is the pen size is a little bit over of the robot robot uh, robot like capacity, then uh, having the robots in that pen, you can actually make this ro this existing milking power group to be suitable for the for the robotic milking. So it's also it can be also like an advantage this thing. Okay, it's important to get the con uh, robot config configuration right. Yeah, so uh, and the reason for this is that very often the pen sizes in large farms are minimum, I would say minimum two, even three, uh, even even four uh, ro robots in one um, uh, in one group, and and uh, because because of that, uh, especially and what we think is beneficial to have the robots in like in one end, 
and then if you are bringing all those robots into this one end, a uh, robot cows at the one end, then there's there's quite a lot of uh, cows going in, uh, laying, li lining into the robots, and we prefer in this kind of situations the system that that cows go into the robot from the other, si other side and then they exit out from the other side and they are not mixing. And this way we can actually make this uh, traffic to be uh, uh, quite quite good. Otherwise, mm -hmm. if you don't have this system, then you need to have a super big size open yards in front of the robots. Yes, so kind of the basic rule, separate cows coming into the entering robot and the ones that are exiting so that they are not mingling in front of the robot just like you do with the milking parlor you are not mm. returning the cows uh from the, the holding area after they have been milked and and one thing to note about this is is uh, ventilation, ventilation. So, mm. so when you are putting the, making those robot rooms to this uh, to this cow pens don't block the ventilation or if you block the ventilation do something with that because what we have seen in many cases that that uh for example robots are put, put on the outside walls and then we really ruin the natural ventilation in that area so this has to, a lot to do with the, with the next uh, the fourth factor that do the best with you can with cow comfort. Uh, ventilation and cooling, they are really, really important. And then um, kind of the airflow is the, fir the, the first thing and, and as important thing, second thing is uh, are the stalls. So the stall surface and, and loops and dimensions, they are really important. So try to make them as good as possible and really invest on those. Uh, if you are making new facilities, think about whether you want to have some, some cows, some cow groups there all the time in a new pen, or would it be a possibility to have all cows there for some time? And, and one, one good example of that, that is, is transition facilities, like in this photo. So if you want to build something, one good idea would be to build a transition cow barn where, where all the cows that are transitioning would spend these, these precious six, seven weeks. Yeah, and uh, one one thing what what we have done in some projects, uh, which, which which should be always done if it's possible, is that if you are if you are able to uh, adjust the dimensions of your old barn. This is an example. This is actually this. This was a small farm, but I think that the, the principles could be uh, could be done in the larger farms too. Uh, uh, so in this case, uh, we made kind of like a like a dog house or extension on the sidewall, so that we were able to arrange the cows this long 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 space to raise up, and at the same time we took this like old wall away. Uh, which had only very small openings, and now what we could do is that we could uh, we could do this with the sidewall curtains, which which were the height of the sidewall, and actually in this case uh, we also we also made feeding lane more narrow, so that we could also uh, make this uh, manure feed alley to be wider. That is of course then uh, the compromise is the feed, feed delivery, and in, in this case uh, they switched to this like uh, like uh, like. Uh, uh this uh bunch of uh, like a like a feeding feeding mat belt conveyor feeding system okay how about working in a robot barn we we mentioned that you must not bring the old working methods to the new new ki new kind of uh, uh milking system what does it mean in practice yeah well uh I was I was once once visiting in this in this specific farm and this farm was thinking about switching to robots. This is this is from Wisconsin, United States, and and this farmer say when we discussed that it's really so that when you are switching to robotic milking, you really need to change the whole layout. It's not just putting the robots there. You just need to rethink your management, and and I I think the handling is maybe the one of the critical points uh, and most biggest difference between uh, between the robotic milking and the parlor milking because typically the handling in a parlor milking is happening in the in, in the place where where the cows are coming out from the parlor and and you have your handling facilities there but now mm -hmm. all, all the cows are spread all around the uh, these buildings and and you you don't have this kind of like a like a like a like a one one place anywhere anymore where you can where you can do do those things and and but this is this is like the 
kind of like a, like a decision what you uh, you need to think how how to do that and if you take the next, next slide so uh, actually this is a quite good example this is the project what we what we have done uh, uh, this was uh, this was like a like an about for four 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 hundred cow for 500 cow dairy and and we were like thinking in this design process that whether we will we will handle those cows in this central si center sized place in this existing cross alley so that we have arranged the traffic from every pen to there or shall we do it uh, behind the robots uh, in each of the, these three milking main milking group pens, and and uh, and again, the thing is also we always come to the management. So that uh, uh, how do you which which things you do and what is the management of handling and how especially how the work is divided between the people who are working there. So it's we also we always also come to the, again back to the management and how mm -hmm. we want to run this farm. Absolutely. So that is the key. First, start to think about how you want to manage your farm. And after that, you start think about the uh, think about the building that suits for your management. And even though it's an old building or existing building, you can renovate it so that the kind of management style your farm wants to have is possible there. Okay, in a large scale uh, robot uh, remodeling projects, the labor efficiency is really, really essential. The robots take care of the milking and the main brands do it really well. So they really take care of that. I wouldn't worry about that. Uh, but there are other tasks mostly involved with handling of cows that you need still people. And all the work is done by hired employees. So in a smaller farm, the owner or the manager can kind of stretch it from, like we say in Finland, you stretch it from your own back, oh. back that, that you just work more and it helps. But in, in these bigger farms with hundreds of cows, it's not possible. One person cannot do really anything there. So, so doesn't it doesn't really help so that's that's why you have to think about the working uh, and the, the managing the farm beforehand and uh, the best results you get when you do the working routine planning in design phase already yeah uh, so we have we have done some studies uh, uh, about about labor efficiency we have done uh we have done one, one much more large, larger study uh with large smaller dairy farms but we also 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 did a, a study about larger dairy robot barns and and this this was this was uh, done and published in american dairy science association publication in 2016 and i did it with together with uh, jack ronenberg from canada and we investigated uh, farms uh, from 400 cows to 1200 cows and those farms, they were in United States, Canada, Germany, and Denmark. And this was uh, like, like kind of like an interview, uh, interview made, made uh, interviewing the farmers and and uh, asking them very like uh, clearly that how how much they are spending times in general and during this daily daily routines. And what we found out that in those farms, uh, labor efficiency uh, it varied from one. To 2.1 minutes to 4.9 minutes uh, and the average was uh, 3.6 minutes in a day and that work include uh, work with the cows heifers calves and feeding kind of like a uh, kind of like a uh, roughly roughly about uh, kind of those things what you do what you do on on saturdays that is minutes per per, per cow yeah this this is minutes per cow minutes per cow yes this to answer your question. Uh, 40 barn has has a lot of data uh, uh, from our, we do, we call them boosted visits. So we go to the robot barn early in the morning and we measure, we have an application, special application. We measure the labor time and we really have unique data from, from labor usage in, in robot farms. And, uh, and we can use that data to estimate the, the working times um, and in, in larger farms too. Okay, so does it, or how much does it matter if you spend a minute or two or 
four per cow in in a big farm yeah so we did we did uh, a calculation with uh, the farm size of 13 milking robots uh, roughly 720 cows in the milk and then we then we kind of like like picked the, like the another farm which is which is a good one uh, and they spend uh, 2.6 minutes per cow per day and uh, like I, I i just told you that the variation in those, those large farms they were from 2.1 to 4.9 minutes and uh, with this 2.5 minutes uh, this farm is sp spending about 31 labor hours per day to do all the daily chores 2.6 minutes yeah yeah. Oh, sorry. And then the, the, the another farm, which we which was like the average, three point six minutes per cow per day. That farm uh, with the same number of the cows uh, was using uh, forty three labor hours per day. So there's a twelve hour difference between those two farms. Yes, and that means that it's uh, it's uh, four thousand four hundred hours in a year and sixty five sixty six thousand hours in fifteen years. And if fifteen you, years, why did you pick fifteen years? I would say that fifteen years is, is uh, kind of like uh, it's been said that it's about the lifespan of the milking robot. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, it comes from there. <laughs> so that means that uh, in fifteen years is one point one point two million euros. I would consider that to be quite a lot of money. So, do you want to do you want to like like earn it or spend it? Mm. And this Absolutely. emphasizes the importance of uh, labor efficiency, uh, so that in a design phase you need to really focus on labor efficiency. Absolutely, labor in the beginning the labor was the issue. Uh, you don't get it even though even with money <laughs> it's difficult to get and uh, and and that is why people get robots and unfortunately quite many farms end up using a lot of labor even though they have these these great milking machines in their in their facilities and that is something we in 4d barn we really want to avoid so that's why all the design starts with with management and with working, uh, and uh, and we we can because because we can estimate the working shifts and calculate benchmark times for your farm, so so that's why we can also help you to to achieve this labor efficiency. Uh, our mission is to coach your farm to be an AMS farm or robotic milking farm and and all the layouts that we create during the during that coaching uh, is really designed around the unique management system of the farm so first we want to find out how you are going to manage your farm your cows your people and then we make the layout that fits it and even though the building is ready even though i call it like a sandbox <laughs> where we must play uh, we still can do a lot of good things inside that. Uh, our service is really um, focused on optimizing the labor efficiency. And, and really, we work the same way, whether the project is with the new building or with remodeling. Yeah, it's kind of interesting because, because quite often in remodeling cases, the first questions uh, farms ask that, where do, you, where do we put the robots? Mm. And we think that is not the right first question. We, we, the first mm. question is that how do I want to manage my my farm, even though it it, it will be uh, it will be a re remodeling case. Mm. Absolutely. Uh, how do I how do I uh, milk? Uh, I mean, how do I milk the colostrum? How do I give it to the to the calves? Uh, how how do I bed the stalls? How do I, where do I inseminate, who inseminates, where is the equipment for insemination, like those handl other, and other handling tasks about lame cows, what happens with them, all these like small and big details that has to be added in. 
Yeah, and because of because of this uh, back background how, uh, of of this uh, understanding about this labor labor times, what we what we are now now uh, doing to some uh, some of our farms that we are starting to like plan working shifts so that which people is doing what and how long it might take time, and then we can really start to plan those like working days for certain people, and that's the way how we can achieve the labor efficiency. A uh, few words about our coaching process. We want to start, and especially when, when we're talking about big farms with hundreds of cows, the farmstead planning is really, really important. It's crucial phase. Mm. And this farmstead plan, it, it can it can mean that it is it is thinking of, about the future buildings. If mm -hmm. you are, for example, renovating and then you have some ideas to expand later on where to put those expansions. Uh, but it also can be comparing uh, different types of concept options of how to remodel the barn. So it's it can be also also comparing options. We do the management planning like like we already talked about and then uh, create the, the perfect layout. Uh, we do working simulations, so we show on top of the layout how to work in that barn, how to fetch cows, how to in, how to inseminate, uh, what are the routines around calving in a transition cow barn, things like that. And then, of course, you need gates. <laughs> in a robot barn, gates are your friends, uh, gates are your follow workers uh, and and they are really really important in a robot barn. We kind of want to create the facility that is easy to use and logical and and supports uh, supports your farm's goals and, and management style. And in a way I think this uh, renovating existing barns I also think that it's also also uh, like in environmental thing. So mm -hmm. now we are using this building what we have we we, we might give the, this building a new 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 life without not, not need to build a new one. This this kind of circular economy is becoming a bigger and bigger issue at least at least in our country. So more and more when we are applying building building subsidies uh, like building subsidies and building permits we need to also show uh, those kind of aspects and i think the renovation is also from that, that point of view not not that bad option okay uh, to achieve this great go goal uh we need the, the farmer of course and that's obvious for the banner farm works together but that's not enough we also need other people Yes, uh, typically in these projects, uh, what we are doing, uh, the farm and farms advisors are, have very, very like they they are they are a part in this process when we are planning the manage, management management of the barn, and because advisor has the best understanding about the farm and its strengths and and uh, and they know how they how this farm is managing the cows mm -hmm. and and. I think that the point uh, how we see it is that instead of this this uh, this like out, uh, like for example like a veterinarian is uh, so that uh, she or he is commenting the drawings we actually let mm -hmm. her or him to be the part of this project kind of. so that yes, we involved. do it together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. exactly yeah. and then the dealers uh, they are very important partners too in this process Yes, uh, uh, there are lots of dealers in this in this uh, listening to us. So you know that uh, what is the best uh, you you have the best understanding about your machinery and and what does that mean? And that's that's why we we really like appreciate uh, your know how about this technological te technological technological issues, and and uh, in a way we we see that. Uh, that when we all work closely together then we get the best results and in a way uh in a way uh, we could also think in that way that um uh we are bringing an added value to the process uh with our knowledge about the manage ma management and and labor efficiency and we are really like <laughs> kind of playing on the same side uh with the dealer and with the farm mm -hmm. and with the farm advisor we are not we are not enemies to the to the dealers mm -hmm. uh we are really we really want to work with you and the best results we have good exper exp uh, examples of, for example here in finland when we when we work 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 closely with the dealers we have great results uh excellent uh, excellent farms mm -hmm. and every everybody is happy 40 barn is happy dealer is happy and farmer is happy and cows are happy and everybody's happy <laughs> <laughs> great <laughs>
Yeah, there, there, there was. Uh, fir uh, first of all, uh, if you have uh, okay, so we have we have here like like uh, our uh, email address. So if you if you have uh, and if you are interested, you can you can contact to us directly, and and book a meeting with us. Uh, and uh, there there is this info at Forty Bond Company, for Forty Bond Com website. And uh, I think now it's time for some questions and uh, i noticed that there is uh, there is uh, one question about uh, christine in your study on labor efficiency did you compare milking robots with other milking systems for example rotary parlors uh, well uh, we have we have focused uh, only only for box milking robot systems but actually in parallel we have always been trying to find out from the farms with this uh, with another milking systems what kind of uh, in what kind of like level they are in labor efficiency and uh, and uh, mm -hmm. we do have some kind of understanding and i would say just shortly that that um, uh, the best uh, parlor farms are in the level same level in labor efficiency than the than the like like lowest lowest bottom level bonds with milking milking robots so um, and that is the reason why some farms uh, haven't been successful with uh, with the robots because they they haven't seen the labor increase uh, labor efficiency increase to be so so good and then uh, tina is asking what do you think about hoof parts and managing mm -hmm. hoof health maybe Virpi, you could you, you could comment on that well that's crucial because it's obvious that in a in a parlor farm, even the in a parlor milking, even the little bit lame ones, or well, even though it's not a good thing, but anyway, you can get them to the parlor. You just walk behind them a little bit slowly than normal cows, but they will get milked. But in a robot pen, where where the robot milking robots are doing the doing the milking and cows have to walk there voluntarily if there is something wrong with their legs they won't come to the robot so not managing your hoof hoof health is absolutely like ruin your your whole system and because food parts are so crucial part of the of the hoof health management so you you have to have them absolutely and uh, for the barns, uh, basic rule is that that uh, food parts must be part of the traffic around animal traffic around the robots, and there are very smart ways to do it so that it doesn't interfere the milking visits, but it's still connected to the milking so that you don't have to push the cows anywhere, but they are doing also that part of the work individually so yes yeah food part is uh, they are really the, um, very like the most neglected uh, mm -hmm. thing in uh, robot barn design in general even in the, in the new ones and also in the in the old ones so it's it's really important starting point in the design so that how do you arrange the food part and 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 like I said we have we have been de developing some systems for that uh, also 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 uh, and discussing together with Wisconsin Uni University mm -hmm. and and safe cows companies called mm -hmm. for example called Burki so they because they have seen that for example in northern america this has been a very very big problem in robotic bonds no no plans for food parts so very good and important question yes absolutely crucial anything else anyone wants to open the microphones and uh, share okay. their ideas tina is having a question about free <laughs> free, free free traffic or not okay <laughs> Do we have another hour left here? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Well, well, I would short, shortly saying that first of all, uh, we know that uh, that free traffic works. We know that when 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 the design is done properly, there is no need uh, need to have guided flow guided flow systems. Uh, we have seen uh, and we have visited very, very many guided flow systems, and and at least uh, the ones uh, uh, the ones uh, in uh, if you if you have the, the guided flow and you have a, a big groups of cows uh, in the same pen, let's say three road pen and guided traffic. What what we have seen is that there sometimes is a risk that those smart gates become like 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 bottlenecks on the cow traffic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the design is even more crucial if you are planning to do with the guided flow and with let's say three robot pens, uh, it's 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 quite tricky 
and and it's really really you need to do it do it in, the, in a good way but but i think uh, pe people say that they want to go to, to the guided flow just so that they could uh, they they don't have any fetch cows but that's uh, that's something which is not happening in a fetch in a guided flow you also need to fetch fetch some cows and then the fetching in the guided flow is even more difficult so yeah yeah, so that would be maybe like two minutes explanation. <laughs> <laughs> what is your what is your opinion, Tina? What you would like to share with us about that subject? Uh, what did you say? I'm oh, sorry, I didn't hear. Uh, uh, what is your? Is there something you want to share about that that subject with us? <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, you know that you hear uh, that you wanted you wanted you wanted the, the guy to the traffic because you're not gonna fetch any cows, and mm -hmm. I don't think that's uh, that's not true. Mm. Yeah, exactly, that, exactly. Exactly our experience as well. Yeah. So there are fetch cows in both systems. Yeah. And yeah. in both systems in some farms there are a lot of fetch cows and 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 in some farms there are only few fetch cows. Mm. But it's not it has nothing to do with the guided or free cow, cow flow. It has something to do with the other management yeah. or facility decisions on the mm. farm. Yeah. So yeah, Karin is asking, would you recommend to have a hoof trimming area near its robot cluster, uh, uh, or is it better to have a central hoof trimming area? Well, this is a uh, this is a question and a very good question. This this what we we, we talked in one of one of those slides. Uh, uh, this one one farmer uh, the, the, the the drawing which I show you or the sketch I show you actually then in that case we decided that we will we 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 will have them in each pen so that there's less moving of animals. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, there can be uh, if you can arrange the traffic uh, very nice traffic to each of pen to this handling area, then you can have it centralized. But if it's going to going to be a tricky road so that it takes take, takes time and it's not not easy, then mm -hmm. uh, the the kind of it, it goes. Get done it, it, it won't it won't get done yes oh, yes that's i guess that but it depends on how the buildings are on the site and 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 related to each other and also the the management style of the of the farm if they have for example people to do the hoof trimming to collect the cows from the pens and do it and and on a daily basis uh, i think one of the best rules and everyone should understand that when they are this uh, making decisions about about hoof handling handling facilities uh, is that um, a lame cow is emergency it should be treated immediately during the next few hours when you when you spot that cow it should be checked uh, it's like a milk fever it's same kind of and in a ro robot farm even more so so nobody looks at the cow in a milk <laughs> having a milk fever and says okay i will look that tomorrow morning nope <laughs> so lame lameness is the same thing if you see a lame cow uh, in a barn it should be treated immediately mm. Yeah. Then uh, there's, there's still one more question. Uh, Cowpro and Tade asked that you mentioned that milk yield dropped during retrofit and went up after the start of the new barn. Uh, was the milk yield the same as before the remodeling or did it went higher? Well, I would say that uh, the experience what we have on our farms, uh, they are mostly uh, mostly switched from two x two x milking uh, to robots. Uh, they, they they you you can you can estimate quite a significant significant uh, like increase in the production. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really it's really happening, and 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 there are farms which have gone up from from thirty four kilos per cow up to forty when they switch to robots. But of course, it doesn't mean that it happens it happens automatically. It's it's not. It, it's not you need to do things things uh, right but generally i would say that almost all the farms which are which are switching from 2x milking to robots they they, they can see that the, the, the increase in production but then if you are milking already not right now 3x then it's going to be more tricky and you need to you need to be more more, more like realistic and really kind of like uh, uh, to, to focus on that the cows you are not limiting the cows uh, milking visits because uh, in robotic milking we try to achieve this 3x milking uh, per day but uh, the milking intervals uh, hours are not even and and that's why uh, sometimes you can see even slight slight drop but so you need to have lots of capacity uh, of the robots to allow this 3x milking sorry 
Okay, so uh, I guess there are some people which which uh, which ha have sh shown up here uh, a little bit late. So we have good news for you. So this recording, uh, I I think it's it will be within like is it like today or tomorrow? You will get the link to the recording. Mm -hmm. So you will you will you will you will you will get it you will get it uh, quite uh, uh, quite fast. There was somebody was raising the hand. Is there still the question or? Or was it the, was was the mistake? <laughs> I want to. I add a link to to the chat because we made was it last last autumn or when was it when we had that talk, Yoni, with you uh, uh, about about large large scale farms and robotic milking. Um, uh, and uh, there, are, and it's in YouTube. Behind, you can find it from the link. And uh, that is the kind of. It's not a webinar. It's it's just you can listen to it while you are driving your car or tractor and uh, and uh, learn more about idea our our feelings and ideas about about bigger farms and box robots. But yeah. I guess if this was all, we want to thank yeah. you. Thank you for for coming mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, enjoy your rest of the rest of the day yes thank you also for my be uh, mm -hmm. uh, for my behalf and and uh, we were happy to see so many people here and and anyway like I said if you have any questions and if you have any interest uh, uh, to our help we are we are here to, and we are very happy to help you absolutely so Bye and see you soon I hope. Yeah. Okay, thank you everybody and 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 bye bye and have a nice have a nice afternoon or morning or evening whatever in the world you are. <laughs> bye. Okay, bye bye.